Hey everyone, welcome back to a new plan with me video. If you're new to the channel, hello, my name is Therese and here we get creative together. Today I am so excited to be showing you how I made this January bullet journal setup for 2023 in my brand new journal. This is our very first monthly setup and we are going vintage again this month. A perfect companion to my beginning pages in this new notebook. And also a continuation to my last year's January theme, which was vintage cameras. I will be using watercolors for my illustrations this time. You can use brush pens or any coloring tools of your choice if you want to recreate some of the spreads. But I wanted some specific colors that I'm afraid I don't have in my colored pens maybe two or three colors but to be consistent with the overall look i'm using this medium all throughout the setup as always i will be listing all my used supplies in here on the video description i'm starting by mixing the colors i'm also going to be showing the specific colors i'm using on the screen but there can be other combinations even if you only have the primary colors for my cover page, I am painting a phonograph, a record player invented in the 1940s. My initial process is to always sketch the composition with a pencil. Then I started painting the pavillon or the horn that has kind of a flower shape using this yellow orangey color. I have many yellow shades here so I was mindlessly mixing this and I tend to forget referring to my swatch card so I just pick up the colors until I am satisfied with the mix. So I'm working my way down to the other parts of the phonograph. I was looking at some pictures on Google about classic phonographs for reference and I am certain that you can also paint this because the overall structure is not complicated. As you can see, I mixed a brownish shade to paint the arm of the horn and the wooden case, but there is a difference when it comes to the tone. You can see darkness and lightness, but I only used the very same mixture by changing the consistency so the lighter parts has a watery consistency and the dark ones has more pigment or less water. So this is a little technique you can do to add emphasis on your paintings. So you can picture this like a vintage display in your living room or office. I am also painting some books and a vase of leaves on the side with some hanging illustrations on the wall above them. I am painting this with a couple of stages. So the first or what we can call the initial layer was just painting all the elements with their basic shapes. You don't really need to think too much about it even if you make mistakes in this layer because there is still a chance to correct it in the next layer. Second is adding details such as fine lines, shadows, and highlights. It's a really important one that will start building the shapes of the elements in the painting as well as the feeling of light and shadow. This really helps create interest too. The end result that you want to achieve may also have you add more stages or layers. Maybe you want something realistic and that would require more detailing. But in this illustration, we're not trying to create realism, but just a cartoonish one. This is my personal approach or how I normally do my watercolor paintings in this specific kind of paper. It's fairly simple. I have to say it again in this specific kind of paper because when using actual watercolor paper, there can be different techniques you can use like wet on wet technique, but I won't be explaining about that anymore since we are not applying that here. So we are already on the second phase which is adding the details and the shadows. 
My paintbrush at this point now has more pigment, so the details are very visible. I'm also mainly using this brush that came in with the watercolor set. I can also do thin lines using this because the bristles are quite stiff and has a pointy tip. So I was able to paint these little butterflies and mushrooms on the wall decor too. I'm already getting satisfied with how this painting is slowly coming together. The whole composition actually is very similar to my previous January bullet journal setup too. But once this whole painting is done, I am adding the January title. I think you already guessed where I'm going to put it, but yes, it is on this blank paper on the wall painting and I'm using lowercase alphabet stamps for it. And since this is a small area, I'm just stamping on the abbreviation. To finish off the whole cover page, I drew border lines and added these ripped colored papers to the corners. I printed them myself. It's actually a bit brownish on my monitor, but I was having some ink shortage, so it came out in this pinkish tone but I still like it and I didn't want to throw it away. And that is it for this whole cover page. I hope you liked it. Like the previous months, I'm skipping the other side of the spread again where I usually make a quote page, but I quite got experimental with my layout this month, but you will still see a page for that in the following spread. This is going to be a Dutch door type of spread, so I'm cutting it first. I've done this layout many times. It's just so convenient since we can include as many pages as we like in one collection without having to create new headers. We are doing some more scrapbooking style here too. I printed a book page that I found on Google. I wanted to print it in gray instead of black since I wanted something that doesn't look prominent or very black, but it turned out to be even lighter than what I see on the screen. Still, it was an ink issue, but it's okay. Then I used typewriter stickers from the Rosie Posey sticker book. I remember getting it last year, so I thought it's the perfect theme to make use of. There is only a single sheet of all the alphabets here, but there is always a way to complete all the letters to January, so I took the letter V and flipped it upside down, and voila, January it is! Next, I am doing the calendar layout. I'm using some more colored papers. I have the same pinkish one for the background and a dark brown for a vintage color. Then I glued a thin white strip on the top where I'm writing the days of the week and I'm using white gel pen to create grid lines and to write the dates. On the bottom of the spread, I'm also pasting this pink strip of paper. The color papers I printed happened to have like a half centimeter margins and I just used an A4 size so they didn't go all the way to the edges of the spread but I think it looks fine. We're gonna be doing another illustration here but let's flip to the other side of the Dutch door to set up another spread first. I'm using colored papers again for the boxes. I cut them into different sizes depending on how much space I need for each section. And I also took the typewriter sticker from the sticker book to add as a decoration on this spread. So I have here my focus that I divided into three subsections. The same goes for my goals. I went for a bigger size here since I'm also going to write down some actions in order to achieve each goal. I also have a section for self-care reminders and some notes. I am drawing some doodly grid lines on the notes using the fine tip of the gray zebra mild liner just for a bit of variation in the boxes and also added drop shadows to them. 
I twitched my hand when I was drawing the drop shadows to the notes box so the line crossed through but I just put another paper on top of it and repeated the same thing again. Now let's go back again to the empty space here and paint our second illustration. I decided to paint a vintage lamp and typewriter. I'm actually painting different vintage things and not sticking to one specific item in order to see something else on every spread. But of course, you can always have the option to stick to one subject as your theme for a whole setup. It can also be a great exercise if you're using your bullet journal as a sketchbook or an art journal. We are painting the lamp first and we're doing the same steps here which is painting the base layer and then adding the details and shadows. Then we are also painting roses for the design of the shade. First by loosely painting the petals from the center of the flower. And as we move around our brush, we create little curved strokes and forming a circle. Then we can add the shadows mainly on the insides of the petals. We are painting two of these and we are just adding the little leaves around them in the end. I usually try to keep my color palette the same for my illustrations. But in this setup, it's going to be a mix of warm and cold colors. We are painting the typewriter in this blue and green mixture starting from the whole body. I wanted to color the keys with yellow later so it was a bit of a challenge trying not to paint over them since I'm not using anything to mask them. Then we are painting the shadows under the keys, and after painting all the keys, I decided to outline them with a 003 Pigma Micron, which has a very thin nib. Then we will proceed to the rest of the parts with dark colors. Let me know in the comments if you or someone you know still use typewriters these days. I remember when I was younger, we have relatives who work in courts and they record everything with typewriters with agility. I was so amazed watching them. It's funny how back in the day we were typewriting fast and accurate. Also the strong clicky sounds oddly satisfies me a lot to hear. <laughs> there were times I would search up typewriting ASMR videos on YouTube and just play it on the background and do my stuff. <laughs> anyway, we are also painting a paper loaded on it with little botanical designs and this is where we're writing a nice quote that says, shine your light and let the whole world see. It's actually a lyric from a song called Mighty to Save. <laughs> but it's also good as a quote. But that is it for these spreads consisting the calendar, focus, goals, self-care, and notes. Moving on to the next page, we are setting up a habit tracker. I glued six of these papers again and drew grid lines using the Zebra Sarasa gel pen and a black Pigma Micron. I'm using the same alphabet stamps for the titles here too and throughout the entire setup. Uh, please excuse the way I stamped the habit tracker, I messed up with the spacing. That's something that is inevitable, I guess, but interestingly, I like the imperfect look of a messy one. Onto the other side of the spread, we are creating a currently list. I've included this prompt in my past monthly setups, and the idea is from Ashley of Real Paper Pages on Instagram. 
It's basically a place to write what you are currently into this month, like what you are currently reading, watching, learning, loving, and so on and so forth. We can write so many other questions, but in here, instead of writing the whole question, we're just writing the verbs. Next, we are picking up our watercolors again to paint this classic rotary dial telephone. I'm using this raw umber color to paint the body, but you can create this color too using primary colors. You can take a green color base and mix in equal parts of purple and orange. So that's a main color along with black for the handset, transmitter and receiver, or the microphone and speaker. And then brown for the dialing mechanism. We are also going to be painting a rose and leaves around afterwards. And while we paint this, I also looked up how this type of telephone actually works since we don't have them here and I only see them in movies. So rotary phones used a system called pulse dialing. You would turn the dial to a given number and let go. The spring-loaded dial would then return to its original position, closing and opening a contact mechanically as it went and thereby sending a number of on-off signals at a metered rate to the telephone exchange it was connected to. Dialing a 1 creates 1 pulse, 2 sends 2 pulses, and so on. The central exchange would then take the assembled string of numbers and place the call accordingly. The higher the digits, the longer the dial takes to return to ready and stop position. So imagine if you dial 7, 8, 9, and 0, it's like a Morse code. I also read that there are still telephones like these that are in great use after all these years. After the painting is done, we're going to cut a Dutch door here again. I've grown so fond of Dutch doors, I guess. They're just super convenient and fun to use in any layout. But on the back of the current real list page is for my content list. I pasted two different colored paper boxes for Instagram and YouTube and also leaving a small space for a little tracker to record the growth. Next to it is a section for some to-do list and my songs of the month. Just a fun place to write what songs I've listened to the most in January. I'm also happy how my overall layouts here are airy and simple and not so busy. It's a great way to start the year and a new bullet journal because I know some, especially who are just starting or a beginner, can get overwhelmed because there are so many monthly bullet journal setups that are decoration heavy, count mine to that, and they can get discouraged when they feel like their spreads aren't pretty enough to be used and worse, ending their bullet journaling journey too soon. But please always remember, even if you are just a beginner, that your bullet journal is for you your purpose, why you started one, always comes first. We can get intimidated by artistic ones sometimes, but if we allow it to dishearten us, then it can be a reason for us to quit. But once you get the hang of the system, you can start experimenting or experiment as you go. However works for your needs and your precious time, and most of all, have fun with it. But when you are in a certain time that you don't feel like getting productive today, it's okay. You can always try again the next day. Maybe you just need a small break, 
but your bullet journal will always be there for you when you come back. I know my monthly spreads are now full of paintings these days and that is because I already got the hang of it. I experiment different layouts and also show them to you through my monthly plan with me videos and I'm just glad that many of you find them inspiring and getting some ideas to make your own bullet journal enjoyable too. Plus your lovely comments always warm my heart so thank you. But yeah, thank you also for listening to that little commentary. <laughs> but we completed the previous spread with another telephone painting. And we already moved on to set up my weekly spread for the first two weeks of January. I'm playing around with these papers again. I've thought about what layout I need for January. And I decided to combine two weeks in one full spread since i have an important event to attend to and i might not have the time to create individual layouts so here i glued rip book pages on the corners and six daily boxes for each week and if you ask if the size of the boxes are enough for me yes it is because now i don't elaborate my tasks if i don't need to for example go to the grocery store to buy snacks. Instead, I'll just write keywords like buy snacks or grocery. But sometimes if I have a specific item that I don't want to forget while I am there, I write it too so I can see it when I open my bullet journal for the day or before I leave. Like I said in my recent bullet journal flip through, I tried to forecast what I need for my initial setup and I applied it here again for January. So that's also my tip when setting up your bullet journal. When you already have the grasp to the system itself, I recommend just creating what you really need or what spreads you think you can keep up. I understand when we get excited on starting one. We set up so many trackers and collections that in the end will never be used. That's fine though, I've been there. But you can try a new prompt or spread from time to time to see how it benefits you. But if you start seeing spreads that are unused repeatedly, then you can decide whether or not to exclude them in your next monthly setup. I'm so sorry for talking about something else and not really explaining what I'm doing here but we are doing two illustrations in this spread and we are doing just the same principles to paint them. The next item we are painting here is a pocket watch that is hanging on one of the daily boxes on the lower left of the spread with flowers and leaves. And lastly is a bigger painting of a flower on the upper right corner. We painted a lot of roses but we are painting a different one here though we are still using the same color for it. Again, we start with the base layer and then adding some shadows to the inside of the petals on the front and intensifying the shadows at the back so the ones on the front pops even nicely. I think one of the best and accessible subjects to practice watercolor painting is a flower. Though when I started, it's not even the first one I painted, but I enjoy painting them now and I would highly recommend to start with flowers when practicing your watercolor skills. I guess my cover illustration turned out to be a bit more outlined than the rest but I might just add them later to make them in uniform. We are just finishing this off with the letters J, A, N just under the flower and we are done with this whole setup. And before we see all the spreads we made together, it is Cherry Streets Day 8 so I'm hosting a giveaway with Royal Talents where one of you will be lucky enough to win a 36 half pan set of the Van Gogh watercolors in this nice blue metal case so you can also start practicing 
or enhancing your watercolor skills. I've been enjoying using this and have used it a lot in my painting, so I'm very excited for everyone participating by following the simple steps on the video description. But I guess that's it for my January bullet journal setup for 2023. It has been an enjoyable theme to create, paired with minimal layouts, and I hope you got some ideas too for your own January setup. Remember to subscribe if you want to see more plan with me videos from me in the future. But for now, have an amazing day everyone and I will see you on my next Cherry Streets video. Bye everyone!